Hey ladies, I am going to be showing you today how I do my makeup. And as you can see right now, this is as real as it gets. There's nothing on my face except a little bit of um, moisturizer on. And I am getting ready to paint my face so I can do my devotion. But um, I figured I'd show you um, some of the cool things that I put on my face to make it look somewhat presentable. <laughs> but um, I hope that you enjoy it. The first product I'm going to use is a color corrector. Normally you call that a CC cream. So let's get started. Okay, so now that I finished putting on the CC cream, as you can tell, um, what, why it's called CC cream, it's called color corrector. It color corrects your redness, your off blotchy spots. It makes it all one color even. And um, you just try and get it down through, through your chin because you don't want to have like two different colors. And so then after I do that, put my CC cream on, I like to put some powder on because I like to blend it in and make it matte. Okay, so um, a big thing that's in right now is contouring, and I have tried to get my sister on here to teach me how to contour, and she's so busy, she's always working, so anyways, I bought these brushes a while back, I have yet to even use them because I don't really contour ever, um, but these are contouring brushes, and I do have a contouring kit, I just never really use it, so it's like, I don't know, it's like pointless, but if you were to contour, you take your dark color. I don't know if you see that. You take your dark color, you put your brush in, and you want to do it like around your face, down here, kind of like this. And you also want to do it around your cheekbones. You contour, which we're not doing. What I do use is a bronzer a really pretty bronzer and I like to put that pretty much the same places up here down here on my cheeks and definitely down here to kind of define somewhat of my um, chin and down here because I feel like it's double chin but anyways but put it up here through here and through here and already I can tell I'm getting So white, so pasty. Then we will, we're gonna put a blush, a blush on. Okay, so we're gonna put some blush now. And I like my blush to have a little bit of shimmer. Even though if you put, do put highlight on, you're gonna have lots of shimmer with that, but highlight's not for all the time, it's not meant for all the time. are really bad right now. I haven't gotten them waxed, but oh well, just they do. So one thing that I like to do um, sometimes, I don't do it all the time, it depends on what kind of eyeshadow I'm going to use. Um, you can put like an eye primer, so I have an eye primer from Urban Decay. So I'm going to be using my 
Modern Renaissance palette. And um, the pigments on here are really, really, really nice. So they show up really, really good on camera. I don't know why this is white. And so I like to always put a lighter color here, down here, and a darker color in here and kind of blend that in. Oh, yeah, and I like to match like shadows with what I'm wearing. So um, I'm wearing gray and black, so it's kind of like neutral colors or so pretty much um, anything is open to my eye. Okay, so I used this color for the base, this color for the shimmer. Okay, so another thing I like to do is eyeshadow through here. You can also put eyeliner, but I got this really cool black palette. I have this really nice black eyeshadow. Okay, so now we are going to put eyeliner on. I have been putting on eyeliner since I was like in sixth grade, so I love a cat eye, so that's what I'm going to do. things with great love as you can tell on my shirt um, I want to give a shout out real quick to Jordan Lenhart she lives in Alabama and she has a just um, 
just Jordan monogramming um, company and she did this shirt for me. I asked her, I was like, Jordan, do you think you could put this on a shirt? And she did it and she designed it and um, thank you so much. I love it. I can't wait to talk about doing small things with great love. Um, also, please stick around towards the end. You will see a recap of all of the women that I've had here on season two sharing their beautiful stories and some cute highlights. Um, one of the things I've been wanting to talk about this topic for a long time because I have been in the New Testament in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John reading from the disciples. And it's so funny, each book is somewhat similar because they all account for things that happened while they were with Jesus, but each book has a unique twist to it. And what I mean by that is the author of the book you're always going to get from their perspective, from what they saw Jesus doing. And I love that. I love that they're all somewhat similar, but different in their own twist because we, we're all, we're all different and we all can perceive things differently um, and tell a story differently. And so I love reading through it and reading through their eyes, through their perspectives. And we're going to be talking a little bit about um, from the book of Mark. In just a few short minutes but I wanted to read one of the things that I love about my study Bible is that it tells you each time you're going into a new chapter it tells you a little bit about that chapter it gives you an introduction it kind of gives you like an insight of what you're getting ready to read so it says Mark's gospel emphasizes actions and deeds so he took account of Jesus actions and deeds it says Jesus is on the go healing casting out demons, performing miracles, hurrying from place to place, and teaching. In Mark, everything happens immediately. As soon as one episode ends, another begins. The rapid pace slows down when Jesus enters Jerusalem. Uh, chapter 11, verse 1. Thereafter, the events are marked by days and his final hours. So he gives a really detailed account of his Jesus's final days and hours, which is so, so important. But one of the first chapters in Mark, um, Mark chapter one, if you wanna go there with me, and I'm gonna read from verse 40 to 42. And Mark takes account of a man that Jesus cleansed. A man with a serious skin disease came to him on his knees and begged him and this is what the man said to Jesus. And Mark took account of this. It says, if, he said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So right there, I really feel like this man had already heard about Jesus and him make, doing miracles because he said, you can make me clean. So already he had this faith, incredible faith, to saying to Jesus, you're the man. You're the man that can make me clean. But let's back up before that. He says uh, four words or five words. If you, sorry, it's four words. <laughs> if you are willing, if you are willing. And let's just pause there for a minute on that. If you are willing. Um, first of all, this man doesn't know Jesus, but he has faith. He has faith that he is the man that's going to heal him. But he asked him a question. If you are willing. And I just find that to be so like I just we can talk on that forever um, I want to ask you that question are you willing are you willing to do something for somebody um, granted we're not Jesus it's just are you willing to do something for somebody let's keep on reading verse 41 it says moved with compassion Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. I want to back up to the beginning of that, move with compassion. Jesus was immediately moved with compassion for the sick man with the skin disease. I want to ask you, are you moved with compassion? Do you have compassion in your heart? Do you know what compassion is? And I've ta I talked about compassion, um, I think it was season one. Um, when I had Ashley Griffin on and we talked about Daring to Hope, the book, and the devotion that day was on being filled with compassion. Um, you know, guys, we got to be filled with compassion for others. 
This world is not all about us. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's something that you daily have to ask God. God, fill me with compassion. And it's simple. It's so simple. Do not complicate what, comp what compassion is. It is so simple. It is being moved to love others, to do small things with love for others. Um, whether it's just saying hello to somebody. I mean, if we are filled with God's love, man, saying hello to somebody shouldn't be a problem. Whether it's possibly if you feel like this urge to pay for somebody's lunch, do it. Do that small thing. Whether you feel compelled to take dinner to somebody and drop it off, whatever, do it. Whether you feel compelled to just call somebody and say, hey, I'm thinking about you today. I love you. Do it. Whether it's, um, ooh, it all starts at home. How are you loving on your husband? How are you loving on your kids? How are you loving on yourself? Do you believe in yourself? Do small things with great love. Um, you know, speaking on the home part, my three kids, um, okay, I'm constantly cleaning up. I'm constantly um, thinking about, okay, what are they going to have for snack? What are they going to have? You know, those are little small things. I'm not expecting a, thank you, mom. Yeah, you're the best mom ever. You clean. You, you make sure we have snacks. I'm not expecting that because my kids are tiny. They don't notice the, those things. But you know what? You know who notices those things? Jesus. And you're doing those little small acts of kindness for your family. You're, you're doing them in love because you love them. And so that's, we start at home and it builds up and you feel like, okay, I want to do something for somebody else. Those should be the types of things that we're looking for to do, to be moved with compassion, to love on others. And, you know, if you feel like, Lord, I'm, I don't feel like I have that, you know what? Start praying about it. And God will fill you with that desire. He will fill you with that compassion for others. For, um, oh, I think about the sweet, sweet kids in the orphanage in Mexico at Casa Hogar. I think about them and how me and my husband, you know, we heard about them. And then when we went to go see them, it was just like on another level. Our compassion, our love for them that we have. It's just you're completely moved. You get to actually see and be a part of. Um, maybe you need to involve yourself in community service. Maybe you need to involve yourself in some type of outreach so you can have that move, that love, that compassion. Listen to what Jesus replies to him. Still in verse 41, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. And he said, I am willing, he told him, be made clean. Immediately, the disease left him and he was healed. You know, I find it so funny that Jesus replied to him and said, I'm willing. I am willing. I mean, he was willing. After he, he healed him, he stretched his hand out. He was moved with great compassion for this man. And then he said, I am willing. <laughs> he answered his question. I am willing. Sometimes Let's ask ourselves that question. Are we willing to do that for somebody? Do small things with great love. Don't complicate it. You know, it seems so childlike. Like one of the things I wrote down was like, write a note, write a note to somebody and just maybe anonymously or if you want to let them know it's from you. And I wrote, that seems so childlike. But isn't that what Jesus says, childlike faith? Have childlike faith. Maybe we need to just keep it so simple. Don't complicate it. Maybe you want to mail somebody a card and say, hey, I'm thinking about you or I'm praying for you. Man, just be that encouragement that somebody needs. Um, so often I feel blah. I mean, I need encouragement. I need somebody to uplift me. And man, if I would just get a text or a call, I'm thinking about you or I love you or this and that let's do lunch like I what an encourage what an encouragement that would be to me so in Mark chapter 10 I'm gonna be talking verses 35 through 44 and um, the title on that is called suffering and service but I want to talk about um, this whole this little chapter right here these verses 
um, talks about becoming great in Christian leadership. And how do you become great in Christ Christian leadership? You know, I've heard about this preached all since the beginning of the year. Pretty much everywhere I've been to, it's talking of becoming a servant. You have to be a servant, a servant leader. And we, me and my husband did a study on this last year for our class, being the suffering in servanthood. And when you are a servant leader for others, when you do have that compassion in your heart, when you do want to do things for others, um, you know, being a servant is not, you think of a servant, man, they do everything for somebody else, you know, and they don't get ignored, they don't get maybe the, the recognition that they need, blah, 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 we could go on and on. Um, you have to be a servant. You have to be a servant in order to be a great leader. And so that's pretty much what this chapter right here is talking about. And I could read the whole thing. It's kind of long. Jesus is having a conversation with James and John. They come in and they're like, oh, we want to sit next to you on your right hand and on your left hand, um, Jesus. And Jesus is like, whoa. You know, like back then, if you know the customs um, of, of Jewish, it or being in somebody's house, like that was a great honor to sit at the left and at the right hand of the person that you know you're honoring. That was that was for the person to decide who was going to sit with them, and so Jesus is pretty much saying, "Who are well? Who who do you think you are that you get to choose whether you sit on my on the left or on the right hand side?" And he said, "That position is not for me to give." He says, "But it's for." Instead, it's for those it has been prepared for. So when the other ten disciples um, kind of heard what was happening, what was going on, it says that they were immediately, they were indignant. And that means indignant is kind of to be like, well, who does that person think that they are, you know? Well, what gave you the right to think that you're all so high and mighty to sit next to Jesus? And Jesus called, therefore, then Jesus said, come here, all of you, come here. He says, he called them all over and he said to them, you know that those who are regarded regarded as rulers of the Gentiles dominate them and their men of high positions exercise power over them. But, and he says, but it must not be like that among you. In other words, he's saying, listen, do not think like this. On the contrary, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant and whoever wants to be first among you must be a slave to all. For even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So he's saying, even I, even I didn't come to be like all high and mighty. He says, I came to serve. He says, take it, look, look at me, look at what I'm doing. I came to serve. That's what you should model after. You should want to serve others. So, and I want to go into this. Do you ever think, do you ever think that you're doing something in vain and you, you're asking yourself, does anybody take notice? Does anybody care? Does anybody care what I'm doing? Like, I'm totally killing myself right now. I'm giving up my time. I'm doing this. Nobody, I mean, no, it seems like nobody cares. Do you, do you ever wonder? Does that ever happen? Thought process go through your mind? Um, man, I know as a mother, things that I do for my kids, I'm like, do they even care? Does this even matter? But even in things that I do, you know, for ministry. Does anybody care what I do? Who cares? We all struggle with that. And we're going to have those moments where we do get in those pity party. Um, but you know what? Who cares? You know what? God sees all. He sees the effort that you put in. He sees what you're doing when nobody is there. Nobody's giving you that, yeah, way to go or giving you that recognition. God sees all. He sees everything. And He is going to reward you. He's going to reward you in some way, some type. We may not see it here on this earth. It may be heavenly treasures that we're storing up. You know, we don't know. But God, I believe that God is going to completely reward you and He is going to bless you. He's going to bless you for doing those deeds that go unnoticed. In Proverbs 5.21, it says, The Lord sees everything that you do. Wherever you go, He is watching. So, He's watching. Don't worry about it. He's you're you're gonna get you're he's going to bless you one way or another. Um, what you do, small or big, it's gonna have an impact on somebody. Um, 
you know, you just never know. You just never know what you're doing, what type of impact it's going to have on somebody, whether it's small or big. Um, Lord, I remember, I know this is um, kind of sad and kind of hard to talk about, but I remember when my father-in-law passed away, the stories that we heard people after people after people after saying, man, he did this, Tony did this for me, Tony did that, Tony was such a good man, he did this, he did that. Things that went unnoticed, unheard, his family didn't even know about it. He was full of compassion. He was full. He was ready to go and do whatever needed to be done. He didn't care about being recognized about it. He just did it because the love of Jesus flowed through him. And that's how it should be with us. The love of Jesus flows through us. And so we should be able to do and act these things with love, with kindness. Um, that's Those are the fruits of the spirits too. Love, kindness, gentleness. You know, I don't know. I mean... I'm, I know I'm speaking to myself to do these things as well. And so I just want to get through to you. It doesn't have to be some big, great thing. Do small things with great love. Whatever you do, do it with love. The love that flows out of you, the, flo the love that is flowing from Jesus has, you know, coming down into you. Let it flow out of you and into others to be a blessing. You just never know. You just never know who needs that touch at that moment. I hope that you've enjoyed this devotion. And um, I hope to see you walking around with a shirt that says this. Do small things with great love. Great love for others.